My name is Pedro Hernandez Serrano from Master University Library, and in this lecture, you will learn what are the fair principles for research data management. But first of all, what is research data management? Research data management are a set of pro processes within the research life cycle to responsibly handle research data. Research data is information derived from scientific activities. It can be numerical, laboratory samples, collections, etc. And management, well, it's an iterative process of describing policies, rules, or technologies uses. At the university library, we have defined six research data management processes, which have no fixed order. It depends on the research. For this lecture, I will show you this order. Metadata, data archiving, data reusing, data access protocols, data terms of use, and data descriptions. But as you can imagine, there are many ways of doing management, especially doing research data, and we have decided to do management using the FAIR principles. FAIR stands for Findable, Accessible, Interoperable, and Reusable. This concept was originally published in 2016 in Nature Scientific Data. As of 2022, it is adopted and supported by the European government, scientific publishers, funding agencies, and the scientific community in general. But what is actually FAIR? Well, FAIR is a set of principles that define best practices for research data management to facilitate discovery and reuse by humans and machines. In other words, FAIR data is data that is human and machine friendly. Therefore, when you do research data management, following the FAIR principle, you aim to open science. Open not in the sense of open data sets, but in the sense of transparent science. So, how do we make research data management FAIR? First of all, to implement FAIR, you don't have to necessarily look at the principles. These are very broad. What you want to look at are, are to the six research data management processes individually that we previously discussed. So, for example, the process of creating FAIR metadata has to do with the findability on the web and interoperability of the formats. In the following slides, we will go through the six processes and we start with metadata. So, what is metadata? Simply put, is the contextual information about the data. Like in this example, the fMRI image is the data itself, but the metadata is the image creation day, the clinical study number, the title of the image, etc. So the metadata provides a structure, context, and meaning to the data. But what's the problem? Well, metadata files are not always findable or sometimes not even created, so they are not always fair. So how can we make fair metadata? Well, easy, by making it rich. So it's findable and interoperable. Rich metadata means that, uh, well, we have to take the metadata itself, but the metadata has to be also described with standard vocabularies, not arbitrary names, but also the metadata is on an interoperable format, like JSON-LD or RDF. Please see the references for more information. There are actually uh, some tools that can help you to transform to those formats. This way, we make sure that it's human-friendly because the metadata files will be on every platform the data is, like the repositories or websites or institutional drives. But it's also machine-friendly meaning that it's readable and actionable by other computer programs. A computer program can be the Google searching search engine, like Google bots shall be able to find your metadata in the web so you can get rich results tests. The next one is data archiving and has to do with findable and accessible principles. So what is data archiving? Data archiving is a practice of placing a digital source in a preservation phase. Normally, 
libraries take care of this activity. Generally speaking, we want to only make sure that the data is not lost when the project ends, like physical preservation, like in floppy disks, disks back in the days, or cloud preservations. The problem are the technical barriers and the lack of incentives that constrain researchers to archive properly. So how do we do for data archiving? Well, by publishing in community accepted trusted repositories like Dataverse or Zenodo, and there are many more, hundreds of them. For sure there are repositories that feed your research. You can take a look at retrieve data to find different repositories. And no worries, you can also publish restricted access data if you see fit. Plus, a machine-friendly metadata file is generated and you get a DOI or persistent identifier for your dataset automatically. The next one is data reusing and it goes hand in hand with the last two. So what is data reusing? All the activities for recycling existing research data sources. Easy, right? All of us have searched data one day and some of us have used the data, but not many have cited the data sources. Actually, DataCite recommends a set of minimum elements for citation, like creator, publication year, title, resource type, publisher, or and unique persistent identifier. The problem is clear. How can I reuse data if I cannot even find relevant data for my research? So how fair can help us with that? Well, we have to endorse and publish machine-friendly metadata so that it's findable by search engines, for example, and it can be reused by humans. Take, for instance, the Corona database of the Dutch government. In the platform, they have published the metadata in REF, Resource Description Framework. This is a format that machines can pick up, like the, Go like the Google indexing crawlers. Therefore, it is findable by, by the search engine when you look for COVID data. And it also has a persistent identifier in the form of a URL. Cool, isn't it? Data access protocols. This concerns the accessibility and interoperability of data. So, data access protocols are formatting and processing rules for data communication. In other words, Protocols are like a common language for computers. Take the European Union public data. You can access it via an API endpoint using a Sparkle query language. Yes, sometimes access protocols can be a hassle. The NASA Air Data access protocols are like 47 pages of documentation. And if a dataset is open access, well, People don't put documentation because, well, it's open access, right? And the problem is that it's not a standard practice in some fields due to technical barriers, which lead researchers to actually collect new data instead of reusing. So how do we make fair data access protocols? Well, by defining them explicitly and again, machine friendly, so it's accessible and interoperable. You need human-friendly steps to access the data. If you go to, for example, platform Numbeo, they explicitly tell you if you want free access to the API, you need to contact them for a free academic API permission. Interoperable technologies allow researchers to access data in many ways so that the data owner can give customized permissions, like access to a particular table, for instance, and keep the log of everything, like in the Columbia Open Health data for COVID. Ideally, we want to register these protocols in API registries or open link data platforms to be discoverable, like smart API platform for fair APIs. Next one are data terms of use, which makes data accessible and reusable. So what are the data terms of use? There are a set of rules practices and licenses that delineate data usage. In other words, there are legal-like statements 
on what you can you can't do with the data. Take the World Bank data in terms of use, for example. It declares a Creative Commons license that says that you are free to copy, distribute data, etc. etc. In general, terms of use also include a request for work attributions, like please cite my data. And also include sometimes disclaimers. You have to ask yourself when you write a disclaimer the following Will anyone get harmed if the data is misused? Do I want to disclose something? We can see the problem that this is not a standard practice in the scientific community. We are not used to write legal statements, unless you are a legal researcher, maybe. So how do we make fair terms of use? So we just need to create them, first of all, and again, in a machine-friendly way. But also reuse the standard ones, so that the data is accessible and reusable, legally speaking. When you are the data creator, Normally, you have to create your own terms of use, like for example, for restricted data. You make them machine friendly by registering them in data policy registries, like fair sharing, where your policy or terms of use gets also an identifier. In the case of open access data, you can always choose to simply use a Creative Commons license that fits best our data. Remember, you want it also to be human friendly. That's part of the idea. Finally, we have the data descriptions. Data descriptions are the labeling or tagging of the data dimensions or variables. Normally, this is called a code book in statistics or branches of social sciences. Where we would, uh, where we would do this manually, we programs like SPSS or in a Word document. But these programs are not very machine friendly. More recently, there are programs that can automatically generate these descriptions. Actually, this activity is also called annotation in computer science and data science. The problem is, of course, the lack of agreement when creating names for the variables, since everyone would come up with their own descriptions and names but also not unique identifiers that makes it very hard to combine data sources. So how do we make fair data descriptions? Easy, by annotating those descriptions with the standard vocabularies or ontologies, making the variables interoperable and reusable. Take these three variables. Instead of me manually describing what is age, what is weight, what is smoking, I would go to BioPortal and search for a relevant definition of those variables and copy that identifier so that the definition gets reused and is findable through the web. When a data creator uses standard vocabularies or ontologies like schema.org, European vocabularies, hundreds of others to describe data, allows the data to the possibility to be linked with different data sources and ideally be part of the linked open data cloud where we can link all the research knowledge available in the world. Conclusion. We have learned that FAIR aims transparent science, not open data sets. This by making human and machine friendly research data management processes. FAIR comes in pairs, so it is implemented by process, not by principles, which are broad. Note that the REM processes have a correspondence with the FAIR metrics to measure FAIR maturity. But this is another lecture. So that's all from my side. Thank you very much.